This section deals with psychophysiological recording methods, that is, methods of recording physiological activity from the surface of the human body. Five of the most widely studied psychophysiological measures are described as one measure of brain activity, the scalp of EEG, two measures of somatic nervous system activity, that is the muscle tension and eye movement, and two measures of autonomic nervous system activity through the skin conductance and cardiovascular activity. Scalp electroencephalography, EEG, is a measure of brain activity through the scalp. The scalp EEG signals reflects the sum of electrical events throughout the head. These events include action potentials and postsynaptic potentials as well as electrical signals from the skin, muscles, blood, and eyes. Thus, the utility of the scalp EEG does not lie in its ability to provide an unclouded view of neural activity. Its value as a research and diagnostic tool rests on the fact that some EEG waves forms are associated with particular states of consciousness or particular types of cerebral pathology. For example, alpha waves are regular 8 to 12 per second. High amplitude waves are associated with relaxed weightfulness. A few examples of EEG waveforms and their psychological correlates with presented in a future slide. Because EEG signals decrease in amplitude as they spread from their source, a comparison of signals recorded from various sites on the scalp can sometimes indicate the origin of particular waves. This is why it is usual to record EEG activity from many sites simultaneously. Psychologists are more often interested in the EEG waves that accompany certain psychological events than in the background EEG signal. One commonly studied type of event related potential is sensory evoked potential. The change in the cortical EEG signal elicited by a momentary presentation of a sensory stimulus. Seeing what that does to our brain can bring about confirmation about our understanding of the brain. In this slide you can appreciate the amplitude of the waves. At the very top you have the aroused which has a regular 8 to 12 second. High amplitudes, please note, that are associated with relaxed weightfulness. By amplitude, we're talking about the increase in the wave. The higher it is, the more amplitude, the shorter it is, the less amplitude. You can see how our brain waves begin to change as we go from state of wakefulness to a state of deep sleep. In this figure, we are able to see the cortical EEG that follows a sensory stimulus and how it has two components, the response to the stimulus, which is the signal, and the ongoing background EEG activity, which is the noise. The signal is a part of any recording of interest. The noise is the part that isn't. The problem in recording sensory evoked potentials is that the noise of the background EEG is often so great that the sensory evoked potential is masked. Measuring the sensory evoked potential can be like detecting a whisper at a rock concert. These two measures are of somatic nervous system activity. For the muscle tension, the electromyography, a technique for measuring the electrical activity of muscles measures how each muscle fiber contracts in an all or none fashion when activated by the motor neuron that innervates it. Movement results when a large number of fibers contract at the same time. Anxious individuals typically display high resting levels of tension in their muscle. This is why psychophysiologists are interested in this measure. They use it as an indicator of psychological arousal. Eye movement, electrooculography, is a technique of recording eye movements. The resulting record, which is activity, is usually recorded between two electrodes taped to the surface of the skin over the muscle of interest. Here you can see a picture, an artistic rendition, 
of the relationship between a raw EMG signal and its integrated version. The subject tensed the muscle beneath the electrodes and then gradually relaxed it. You'll notice from this figure that the main correlate of the increase in the muscle contraction right here is an increase in the amplitude of the raw EMG signal which is up here. This reflects the number of muscle fibers contracting at any one time. Please note that most psychophysiologists do not work with raw EMG signals. They convert them into a more workable form. The raw signal is fed into a computer that calculates the total amount of EMG spiking per unit of time. The integrated signal is then plotted and the result is a smooth curve that looks like the one at the bottom the amplitude of which is a simple, continuous measure of level of muscle tension. Here is a rendition of the electrooculogram. The typical placement of electrodes around the eye of the electrooculography uh, is at the top and at the bottom, on the nasal hemiretina, which is here, and at the temporal hemiretina. Electrooculography is based on the fact that a steady potential difference exists between the front, which is the positive, and back, negative of the eyeball. Because of this steady potential, when the eye moves, a change in the electrical potential between the electrodes placed around the eye can be recorded. It is usual to record the EOG activity between the two electrodes placed on each side of the eye to measure its horizontal movements, and between two electrode placed above and below the eye to measure its vertical movements. Emotional thoughts and experiences are associated with increases in the ability of the skin to conduct electricity. If you've ever blushed or gotten goosebumps, you can relate to this particular slide. The physiological basis of skin conductance changes are not fully understood but there is a considerable evidence implicating the sweat glands. Although the main functions of the sweat glands is to cool the body, these glands also tend to become active in emotional situations. Sweat glands are distributed over most of our body surface, but as you're already most certainly aware, those in the hands, feet, armpits, and forehead are particularly responsive to em emotional stimuli. The SCR, skin conductance response, is highly sensitive to emotions in some people. Fear, anger, startled response, oriented response, and sexual feelings are among the reactions which may produce similar skin conductance responses. These responses are utilized as part of the polygraph or lie detector. The skin conductance response in regular subjects differs when given fair and unfair offers, respectively. However, psychopaths have been shown to have no difference in skin conductance between fair and competitively unfair offers. This may indicate that the use of lie detectors relying on skin conductivity gives psychopaths an advantage in criminal investigation that non-psychopaths do not have. In relation to cardiovascular activity, uh, this has two parts, the blood vessels and the heart. It is a system for distributing oxygen and nutrients to the tissues of the body, removing metabolic wastes and transmitting chemical messages. The blood volume changes in the volume of blood in particular parts of the body are associated with psychological events. This is best known example as such as a change in the engorgement of the genitals, which is what we call a plethysmo associated with sexual arousal both in females and males. Plethysmography refers to the various techniques for measuring changes in the volume of blood in a particular part of the body. Hence, supporting the idea from the cognitive perspective that our largest sex organ is in fact our brain. Because it is with the activation of the brain that we'd then be able to have a physiological activity. This is how we record human psychophysiological activity.